Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be the third part of my series about building a custom LEGO 12 volt steam engine. And this part is going to detail the inspirations that I had for designing this steam engine. So this is going to be kind of divided into two parts. The first part is going to be looking at the three official uh, 12 volt gray era steam engines. And then I will actually switch to my computer and I'll start uh, recording on OBS Studio and I'm going to walk you through some of the um, official, like real steam engines in real life <coughs> that were inspirations to me during the designing of the steam engine. So I'll start with 7730 um, and just kind of go over some of the details and mention specifically what things I want to use in my own design. So as you can see, this is a small tank engine. Um, I know straight out that I'm going to make a large engine. I don't want to make a small engine like um, like a tank engine because I, I specifically bought like the big red wheels and stuff like that to make a big engine. But there are a lot of details about this engine that I do like. Um, of course, it's got black steam cylinders. I want to use black steam cylinders in my own engine. Um, <clears throat> the motor base is kind of not applicable because big engines need the motor in the tender unless you're building a big tank engine. Um, I do really like the steam domes and the use of minifigure heads. I might see if I can acquire some minifigure heads for my engine. Um, and then it's got the rear windows, the front ones and the front wider ones and then the narrow ones, the back narrow ones. Um, these ones are particularly rare. I already, again, I already have some of these parts. Um, we're going to incorporate them into the design. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to set up the cabin yet because you can put these windows, like you can put these in the back, for example, and these in the front. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, yeah, I don't know what else about this about this engine. It's a, it's overall a pretty simple design compared to the, especially compared to 7750. Um, and it's kind of not applicable for my project because I'm designing a, a large steam engine, but I like this engine. And yeah, it's kind of, like the, as, a, as the one of the first 12 volt gray era steam engines, it is like, it's a classic. And I feel like there's a lot of good things about it that they kind of further iterated on in 7727. And then some of the later, like, I don't know if you call them 12 volt, like 7715, 7722. But this is a good engine. I like it. So now we'll move to 7750. This is probably where I'll be drawing more of my inspiration from, um, as it's the only official large steam engine, I'm not counting 7777. Um, I will build that in a future video actually and make a review about it. Uh, but 7750, there's a ton of details. This is my favorite 12 volt steam engine set. Um, there's a lot of details that I really like about it. Like the body is like more complicated than the rest of the steam engines. I love these hoses. These are one aspect that I definitely want to incorporate into my own design. Um, incorporating hoses kind of like this, probably angled back. I could do it where they're angled to the front. Um, so I actually already made some straps in studio and one of the drafts does have the, the hoses, like one of them is, is this way and then the other one actually faces the other way and points toward the front. I don't really like that. So I'll probably have them both like this. Um, I like these these areas. These are, these are in real steam, steam engine. I think they're supposed to be walkways for the boiler. So I like these kind of solid blocks in the sides that I will probably incorporate into my engine. The long cabin is definitely something I want to do, and these doors. I love having doors in the steam engine. I know 7777, it doesn't actually have doors in the cabin, um, but I, I really like the doors in the cabin, so I'm going to try to make a longer cabin with doors because I like the design of the doors. Um, moving down to the wheelbase. This is a pretty simple wheelbase. I'm, I'm not going to make a wheelbase like this, but this is a good kind of design to start with. Um, I'm going to be making a wheelbase more like 7777 with like an articulated part of the bogey. Um, but yeah, this, this wheelbase is pretty, pretty good. And then kind of going to the front, one thing that this engine is missing that 7777 does have, and I probably am going to incorporate into my own engine, is elephant ears, which are like the smoke deflectors from the front of the engine. This doesn't have them, but most steam engines in real life do have them. Um, so it looks a little bit bare without them. And then it's, of course it's got lights here. I'm probably going to put lights here and then also in the boiler for my own engine because I think it's a little bit weird that these two lights, these two lights are lit up, but this one isn't when it's moving. Um, other than that, yeah, of course it's got the steam engines. I can't put the steam cylinders like integrated into the body. I will have to put them into a wheel, into a bogey, uh, just because of the design of the bogey that I want to make. And there's too much overhang if they're, if it's a long body, because I'm probably going to make a longer body, like 28 studs, 32 studs. This is for reference, this is 24 studs. So yeah, that's about it for the engine. Moving to the tender, I think this is an interesting tender because although the body is centered over the wheels, 
or over the motor, the kind of the plate for the minifigures and the ladder, like there's more overhang on this part, but the 7777 tender is more overhang on the back. Um, so I'm not sure how I want to set that up. Maybe I'll have a longer tender with overhang on both the front and the back. When I say overhang, I mean, you see these slopes here. It's like the tender extends, the, the, the actual wheelbase extends beyond the motor this way. Um, so I will try to make it extend beyond the motor in both directions because I am trying to make like a really big steam engine. Besides that, I don't think there's a ton to comment about on the tender. Uh, I definitely like the lights. I want to put these in my own design and I think this is also pretty standard for the tender. I mean, I don't, they only made two. They only made two big tenders for the for Lego Steam Engines. This one and then seven 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 seven. But both of them have this kind of cutout in the roof so that coal can be loaded in. So I'll do that in mine. Um, yeah. Besides that, I think that's a, that's about it. I like a lot of details about this tender, but I think for my own design, I want to make a little bit like bigger, like a taller tender, longer tender. Um, yeah to kind of go more in line with the size of the engine that I want to build. And lastly, moving to 7727. The other two engines were made in 1980. This one was 1983, so this is a little bit more modern than the other two. Again, we're talking however 40 something years old, 40, 41 years old compared to 44 years old, so not super modern, but slightly more modern. At the front, you can see it uses clear lights instead of yellow lights. I don't think I'll do this. I do like the yellow lights in the engine. I think it, the clear lights look a little bit look a little bit weird. Um, again, this is a tank engine, so I can't draw too much inspiration from this because I'm going to build a big engine. I think one thing that's different about 7727 is that it has red steam cylinders, and then the entire under base, the entire wheelbase, and the boot and like the main plate is red. Like if you compare it to 7730, you can see 7730 has a lot more black in it, whereas 7727 that pretty much below the doors is just entirely red. Um, I do like that the fact that it's all red underneath. I'll probably do that for my own engine, except for the steam cylinders. Those need to be black. Um, but trying to keep the color scheme of the wheelbase in line. And then beyond that, it's not not too much to comment about. Um, the hose I like. This is, I think, kind of drawn from 7750s. So yeah, I'll integrate that into my own design. And then, yeah, standard cabin, doors, windows, I think that's about it for the three official steam engines. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually screen record on my PC and I'll show you guys some of the inspiration that I got from real steam engines around Europe from like the sim a t similar time frame to what I believe the Lego steam engines were designed around. All right, so I switched to my PC. Hopefully everything's all right. I've got a couple of engines to kind of detail. Uh, the first one is the BR50. And I know that there was a 12 volt model made of this already by um, someone on Eurobricks. Um, so I don't think I will design this one, but the inspiration is, I like the inspiration from it. Um, this is a pretty big engine. I can't actually build this because I don't have five of the uh, big wheel sets, but I think this is cool. And I like that the tender, this would probably have to be made with two bogies, two separate bogies because it's a longer tender. Um, I like the elephant ears. There's a lot of good detailing around this engine. Um, so yeah, that's about, that's for this one. And then the next one is the BR-78. This one is a tank engine. It is a 464. Four. Um, this one would be cool to design. I would have to modify like the motor, like take the middle wheels off and put it here on the back probably because the front bogey would need to have the uh, steam cylinders on it. And then you can see it's got similar details on 7750, like with these long blocks on the side and then some doors. And then, yeah, this, the tank engine means that it has a res reservoir for coal in the back. Um, so it'd be interesting to build. I might want to make a tank engine for one of my kind of engine drafts as I, I'm going to make a couple of drafts of engines as I uh, prepare for my final design. The next one is the BR03.10. This one there's not a ton of good pictures on. Um, this is, I like this picture. This one's also a pretty good render. Uh, this is a 462 engine design. I like, the tender is really big on this one. Um, and yeah, it's got a it's got a very long boiler. These just wheels are the driving wheels are like also super big. Um, there's no doors in the cabin, and yeah, steam cylinders here. And then the last one that I want to show you guys is the BR56. This one's kind of a shorter engine. It's not a tank engine. It's got the same wheel arrangement as the BR50. You see, they're both two ten zeros. So two leading wheels, ten driving. Oh no, sorry, 
does not have the same arrangement. This one only has eight driving wheels, so this one I could actually build. Um, it's a shorter, shorter engine. It, it's a little bit like, it's very tall. I could build this. This would be cool to build, actually. The tender is interesting. This one could probably be built with uh, just o over one motor, a 12-volt motor. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the engines that I wanted to show you. Um, I'll probably be drawing inspiration from all, from all of them in some regards in my final design uh, because looking at a lot of steam engines means that there's a lot of like data points for different designs that I can use, um, which, yeah, these will be good as I move into my, like the, the designing part in the studio. I'm gonna be using Bricklink Studio to design renders of my models and then I will actually build it in bricks. And yeah, the last part of the video is gonna be me designing, me building, showing you the final engine design. Uh, so that's about it for this video. I'm going to actually switch to my main camera again and do the outro. So that wraps up the video for today. Thanks for watching. I will post the fourth part of this series soon, which is going to be about learning how to use Studio and going over some of my uh, first drafts of the engine. Um, so yeah, that'll be released soon. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.